Well, here's something I can share with you. At the very end of the hallway here is this door, and that belongs to, or used to belong to, the girl child. But as you can see, she's moved out. She moved out about a month and a half ago. She came back from Tennessee in September to start on her new job that she applied for here before departing. Uh, she got an early call back, so she's been in that job for a few months. She lived here, saved all her pennies so she can get an apartment. Uh, she did. The boy came out in January, and now they have an apartment probably about five, eight minutes away from here. So she's gone. Am I happy about it? No, I'd rather her be here, but you know, everybody has to grow up, right? And uh, she seems pretty independent. So let me close this door and back on out of here. I'm not really quite sure what, what do people do with your kid's room once they move out anyway. Don't know. Of course, down the hallway, very end door here is the male child who went away to college. And right out this door on the right, of course, we have uh, the workshop. And that's what I got my sights on right there. I want to take that for a little ride out there and tell you what's been going on. I'm going to try a new microphone, see if I can get some better sound while I'm riding it around in the helmet. I guess it's a good enough day after we had just a little bit of snow a couple days ago. I'm going to take the Grom out for a little ride. I got these gloves. They have these kind of inserts for your knuckles. It's supposed to be a hand protector, but I guess it's also good for, you know, crashing, crash protector. Or if you get mad at something, punch a hole in the wall. I'm not an angry person, so I don't have to worry about that. Alright, let's take a look at a Las Vegas desert phenomenon, that is the proliferation of bag trees. You ever wonder where bags come from from the grocery store? I was told my kid is they grow on trees out here in the desert. And I would point out here and I'd say, see them? So basically, what happens is that these bags fly away and because we have a lot of really dry brush out here, they kind of stick to them like Velcro. And sometimes during the sunset, when the sun is setting over there in the west, uh, you can see the colored light filtering through the bags and it looks really, really beautiful. Not. I'm just kidding, it doesn't. It doesn't look beautiful at all. So anyway, now that I'm an empty nester, what do empty nesters do? Apparently empty nesters uh, get carpet. And it was a good experience. It was a Home Depot carpet buying experience. We had a little homeless encampment over there, like a little place. It was a good experience. I mean, just go in there, you pick it out. If uh, you want a sample, within three days, Home Depot will have it to your door. They'll give you three samples, you know, of a bigger swatch, you know, instead of the little two by three. They'll give you like a foot by foot, something like that. And anyway, pick some out, uh, give them a call. The guy comes out and measures in a couple days, and within two weeks, boom, the installers are there free installation. I was really happy with the whole process. Very efficient and very professional. I highly recommend Home Depot carpet if you guys are looking for some uh, come income tax time. It's one of the best deals I've found around. And there it is all in. And I like it. It's a print type carpet. I thought I'd try it for a change. It gives it some character. So anyway, like I was saying, the boy's probably going to return home around May and start looking for some employment. Then I will officially be an empty nester. I'm thinking, although either of them can come and stay with me as long as they want to, they know that, they can save their money. I told my daughter she should just stay home for about five or six years, save every penny that she makes. At the end of that, she could have a paid-off house or a condo or something. 
but she was eager to go out and get started on her life. I, I really can't blame her. You know, I have two brothers, all three of us were out of the house by the time we were 18. Maybe it just runs in the family. So I did make an upgrade to my motorcycle carrier. I got a hitch riser. Well, I got a few things in from Amazon. I got two more hitch stabilizers. I didn't like the last one I got. I got this hitch riser. It's also a hitch lower, depending on what you want to use it for. But I found that I drugged the back end, so I got this hitch riser. I got a license plate uh, relocator bracket. I got a locking uh, hitch pin, and of course the hardware. So I'm gonna put those on to raise up my cycle carrier because it drug. And that's something that Z-Shark recommended. He has the same type of van that I have. And so you know, it comes on pretty good authority. As it, uh, I took it for a test drive, I pulled into a convenience store, and that motorcycle carrier drug bottom down there made a, quite a racket. So I decided to go ahead and raise it up 8 inches, put it about the level of the rear bumper. And so I got uh, the hitch riser, I got two stabilizers because uh, the one that came with it, I don't know, I didn't really like it that much. So I got two that are well reviewed. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on the hitch, you know, from where the hitch riser goes into the regular hitch and then one where the motorcycle carrier goes into the hitch riser. And I ordered some new uh, straps, some good quality, highly rated uh, motorcycle tie downs as well. As well as these cool gloves I got here. So I think I'm all set. Uh, camper van is all fixed, repaired as far as the tanks go, and I'm going to be looking to trip here pretty soon. Take the motorcycle with me and recreate just a little bit here. So anyway, what do you do as an empty nester anyway? I always wondered how cool I look riding this little grom around. And the answer, I guess, is now not that cool. So anyway, that's what I've been up to. That's what I'm thinking about. Um, if any of you are recently empty nesters, you know, I wouldn't mind hearing your experience, you know, how you felt. You know, me, I've been, of course, uh, as you've noticed, I've been buying some toys like this motorcycle and welder and you know some hobby stuff you know I don't know anything that kept me from doing it before I really don't I uh, I don't know there's just something that comes with that that makes me feel like doing a few things for me right Instead of putting somebody else first all the time, they seem to be pretty self-sufficient and on their own, doing their own thing. And just like my parents did before me, they just learn how, have to learn how to let go and uh, get on with your life. And for me, at least, I think that's going to be, or that's going to mean more travel, going to mean some more van outings. So uh, I'll take you guys on a few trips with me. And anyway, I'm going to start making it back home through mostly the back streets and stuff. And we'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Also, take a look at this. Remember when I first got the bike, it had 740 miles, so I went uh, 98 miles. First thing I did is I got a tank of gas when I got it. So. I already went 100 miles, and I still have about one-third of the tank left. Pretty good mileage. So that's the video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe and ring the bell so you get future notifications. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.